Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel for another DIY upcycling video. Today is extra special because it's my first Christmas DIY video of the 2021 season. I'm really excited to start crafting for Christmas. It's by far my favorite time of year to decorate. And as a reseller, uh, this is a really good time for sales. I have some stuff that I need to make to sell in my antique booth, Green Onion Vintage, hopefully for a good profit. I'm really excited for today's projects, especially because they're all very budget friendly. These are things that I've thrifted or found in antique stores and even just use my scrap wood pile to create some really beautiful home decor for Christmas that you guys can easily recreate on a budget. And honestly, the options are endless with the types of projects that I'm doing today. I'm hoping just to inspire you guys, spark a little bit of inspiration so that you guys can make some of your own. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. Let's jump into project number one. So for my first project, I had this scrap piece of a one by four in my garage. It's probably been in there for months. And I got this idea from a TikTok account. I'll have to link her name down below because I'm blanking on it right now. Um, but she just made like these very primitive, simple Christmas tree, kind of like a shelf sander, um, just by cutting wood into triangles, painting them different colors, and then um, just uh, brad nailing them together. Such a simple little project and I made a few varieties for you guys today just to kind of get your wheels turning. Um, I did a 20 degree cut on my miter saw to make these triangles so if you want to replicate them exactly then do 20 degrees that's what I did and then I just made various sizes. My miter saw is kind of smaller so I couldn't make a very large scale of this but I would like to in the future. Um, so for a few of them, I'm just staining them with the Tobacco Road water-based gel stain from Dixie Bell. And I did a few of those in the stain. And as you can see, I'm cutting some cardstock now and decoupaging a couple of these triangles with some really pretty paper. I get all my cardstock from Michaels. They have a really good variety. And sometimes their big packs of cardstock will go on sale for $5. So I always stock up them. This is from a Christmas um, pad of paper a couple years ago. So I did a gingham tree and then this is like a brown papery ornament paper that I decoupage onto this one and I also mod podge over the top of it just to kind of seal the paper and I always suggest sanding the edges a little bit which you're going to see me doing right here. Um, you're just kind of sanding the edge of the paper and that makes it look like it's one complete piece and not just that you put paper on top of wood. It really just looks like it was painted right on there so that I definitely recommend doing the sanding step and then once I have those ready to go I paint a few more so this is the evergreen color from Dixie Belle this is just a chalk paint you can use acrylic paint um, any kind of craft paint that you have on hand and any shade of green this is just kind of my favorite and very good for Christmas time um, so I do a few that are green like that and then my next ones I believe are white the white I use for most of my crafting is this drop cloth color from Dixie Belle because it's a few shades off of white and I just prefer that look that it's not the stark white. I like a little bit more of a soft cream color. Um, and so once I have these painted um, nice and white, I do use an Iron Orchid Design stamp to put like a scripty font on one of them. And I thought that turned out really pretty. So all I'm doing is just putting some black permanent ink onto this stamp. I, like I said, this is from Iron Orchid Design. You can order this from my treasure house, which I'll link them down below. That is where my booth is located at. Um, so you can see here just how quick and easy that was. Just get, adds a little bit more of a design to these. And then I am going to be um, kind of faux distressing all the edges of the trees with this antique glaze. This is just from Walmart. Um, but you could also use that same gel stain I was using earlier or any kind of brown stain that you have on hand. And I just like that that added a little bit more character and made them look a little more aged. Since a lot of my booth is a mixture of antiques and my handmade goods, I do like my handmade things to look old even though they're basically new because I just made them. So you can see that just adds a little bit of character on the edges there and I really liked that effect. I don't do that terribly often. I normally distress with sandpaper, but this actually was very easy and much less messy. I mean, I did have very stained fingers when I was done because I should have been wearing gloves, but it's better than getting that sanding dust everywhere, in my opinion, especially now that it's cold out and I'm going to have to be working inside. 
And that is so typical of Illinois that it is way too hot to be in my garage, like for many months of the summer. And then there's about two weeks where it was really pleasant in the garage and now it's already freezing again. It's ridiculous. You can see how nice those aged edges look. And then to attach these, I'm just using my Ryobi Brad Nailer. I've talked about this uh, probably every DIY video. Um, you can get it at Home Depot for a really good price, especially around the holidays. I think I paid $99 for mine. It is cordless and does not need an air pump. It's just a really great tool. So I just put a couple Brad Nails in the triangles and they'll stand up on their own because they're kind of staggered in that way. And here's how they turned out in the end. So I did several groups of three um, but you could just do whatever you want. And you can see I used a transfer there for the pine cone one kind of towards the back. That's an Iron Orchid Design transfer from their Christmas pad last year. Um, so you could definitely use the Iron Orchid transfers for these. Um, you know, let your imagination go wild and let me know what you guys do and if you make some of them yourself. Next up, I have this headboard that I had thrifted a few months ago, honestly. It's been sitting in my garage. It is a really poor quality. I paid $6 for it. It's not real wood, but it is really heavy. It's basically pressed wood with a very shiny dated veneer um, top layer. So I've had this in my garage. I have, have not been sure what to do with it, but I decided it would be perfect for a big statement like Christmas sign, um, especially for the tent sale that we have coming up. It actually is tomorrow, November 4th through the 6th at my treasure house in Edwardsville, Illinois. So if you're local, you definitely want to check that out. I know I'm getting this video out a little late for that heads up. Um, so I am going to paint the frame of this a collared greens from Dixie Bell. It's another chalk paint color, nice dark green. And then I'm using that drop cloth white for the background of the sign. Um, just going through here, I end up doing two solid coats of the white. I just needed the one coat of the collared greens because I didn't mind that the wood kind of came through. I wanted this to look a little bit distressed and primitive. Um, so you can see how nice and thick the Dixie Bell paint is, though. The white does cover really well, but it definitely needs that second coat, um, especially since we're going on such a slick surface. Now, if you wanted to be really particular, you could have primed this. It probably would have saved you um, a coat of the chalk paint. But really the chalk paint did a really good job of gripping onto this. I don't get too worried about priming my signs because it's not like they're going to be handled a lot. Like people aren't touching them very often. Whereas if I was painting something that was like a piece of furniture, I definitely would have primed it in that case. Once I had that all painted, I went to my Cricut Maker 3. Um, I shared a little bit more about using my new Maker 3 in a video when I make my fall DIY project. So go back and watch that one. I'll link it down below if you want to learn more about this Cricut machine. Um, right now I am cutting out a stencil. I'm just using some scrap cardstock, not any kind of special material. This is a very affordable way to make stencils with your Cricut. Um, and since I'm making such a large sign, I'm actually having to cut three different sections and I'm going to tape those sections together right here. So I'm just taping the cardstock kind of, I, when I designed it in design space, I made sure that I had sections that overlapped so that it would be nice and easy for me to line them up perfectly and tape the stencils together. It is a little bit tedious, a little bit of a learning process, but now that I know how to do it this way, my signs turn out really beautiful and the possibilities are endless for how large of a sign that I want to make. The new Maker 3, you actually can cut materials up to 12 feet, which is incredible, but it's only their smart materials that that works for and it would have to be vinyl. So I actually thought about doing that for this, but I didn't want to go have to get more vinyl. I wanted to just use what I had on hand, so I used the cardstock, and it was, um, you know, very easy for me at this point because I've done it so many times. I get a lot of people who say they don't understand how I make such clean, stenciled words, and I do it exactly the same every time. So let me tell you again, when I do my stencils, I use a little makeup sponge, just like they're very cheap ones that you can get at any store. I think these ones are actually the ones from Dollar Tree, and it's just a little white makeup sponge. The trick is to use paint that's pretty thick. So I like to use the Waverly black paint. Um, it's a black chalk paint. The Dixie Bell caviar black paint also works really well because it's also very nice and thick. And then you want to make sure that your sponge just barely has any paint on it. And I'm always stippling on the paint. I'm never like wiping or scrubbing because I don't want that paint to seep under my stencil. So if you just keep a very vertical up and down motion with very little paint on your sponge, 
Your stencil is going to come out really sharp and clean. This hardly ever fails for me anymore. And it is a little tedious. It's, you know, it takes quite a while to kind of dab really gently. And sometimes I have to do a couple coats. So that can be pretty time consuming. But with this um, Waverly paint, it's such a thick paint that I often don't have to do two coats. And that does kind of save me some time in that way. But also it's so much easier to do it this way and not have to fix anything when you're done if you had rushed it doing a different method. So I definitely recommend using the makeup sponge and all those paint tips I just shared with you. I'm gonna be using um, a red paint for the North Pole words at the top of this sign. Just the exact same technique using the makeup sponge and just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing forever and ever. My shoulder always kills me by the end of this, but it's worth it because it always works. And I'm able to pull up my stencil right away. I always do that right after I finish painting it. There's no point in waiting for it to dry. Actually, sometimes if it dries and your, your paper can get kind of stuck. So I just, I just take it off right away. And then I always fill in my stencil lines with a tiny little brush. I'll share my fonts down in the description space because I used a font for the Christmas shop words that actually didn't need filled back in. It was already designed to be a stencil and that was really helpful for me and saved me a lot of time. Now I'm just going through with a tiny little detail brush and adding a little red stripe underneath the words. I'm just kind of uh, freehanding it and using this ruler as a guide so I'm not using any kind of stencil or anything for that part. I just thought it needed a little bit more detail. And then after this, I am pulling out my Christmas pad of Iron Orchid Design transfers that I bought last year. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I am gonna distress these words really quickly. I do think distressing the stencil always helps it look a little bit more authentic. And I was kind of going, like I said, for more of a primitive sign. So I did sand these down and then wiped it nice and clean. And then once I have that cleaned off, I move on to the transfers from Iron Orchid Designs. And I kind of take my time trying to figure out what's gonna fit the space the best. I actually didn't think I was gonna use a transfer when I found the placement for my words. So I think I probably would have shifted everything a little differently had I known I was gonna do this ahead of time. But this is kind of how I work where I don't really know what I'm gonna do as I'm working. I kind of just, you know, feel things out as I go. And it typically ends up going really well. I just, sometimes some foresight would have been really nice. So this is what the pad of paper looks like. It's from, it's the Woodland Christmas, and this is from last year. So it's not their brand new Christmas one. They have a new Christmas one that came out just in the past couple weeks, and it looks really beautiful. I just haven't got my hands on it yet. So you can see it has some really beautiful images. I used some of them up last year, so I don't have everything that sh to share with you today. But their transfers are so beautiful. They look like hand-painted paint once they are applied. So I kind of figured out my placement. I actually cut up a couple of the different wreath um, like quarters and overlaid them on top of each other, cut them up into different sections. So definitely feel free if you have the transfers like this to cut them up and make them work for you. Don't feel like you have to use them exactly like they are given to you on the pads of paper. These are so easy to use now that I have them placed. I just remove the backing and then I use a little scraper to just Put a lot of pressure on the top and there's you can see there's like a protective grid sheet and once you push down hard enough you're going to transfer the image onto the sign and it's going to be permanently attached there and so it's really really cool and they're really beautiful I've been using them for a while now um, this is definitely not my first time using them on this channel and I've always been happy with the result they turn out so pretty every single time so you can see now that I'm going to add um, an extra little holly leaf under here, even though that wasn't how it was designed originally. And then I add some extra berries. So definitely just kind of chopping up what they gave me and making it my own. And I think that always um, is a fun way to use these. What I did not share with you because my camera died is that after I applied these, I covered the entire surface with clear wax from Dixie Bell 
And then I went over it with the brown wax to add some more antiquing and detail. You can kind of see it, how it's more concentrated around the edges of the white. Um, I didn't do it like super dark, so it might be a little hard for you to see, but I did antique it quite a bit, and I just love how this turned out. I am asking $75 for this at the tent sale. And for something this large, it's actually a pretty low price for me, but I really want it to sell this weekend. I definitely don't want to store it. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't mind having it in my booth during the Christmas season because it's so beautiful and festive, but I want to make sure that this one gets home uh, and not my home, gets to my customer's home as soon as possible because I think it's so pretty. I think someone will be really happy to find this at the tent sale. Now after a very complicated project, I'm gonna share with you just the easiest project ever. I had this little barn door. It's a very like whitewashed gray color. All I'm doing to this is adding this wreath. I believe it's from Hobby Lobby maybe last year. I got a plaid ribbon. Um, I don't even know from where, probably Hobby Lobby. I actually think I might've gotten this ribbon on a gift. My sister-in-law, I'm pretty sure, uh, gave me a present with this ribbon on it and she has really good uh, taste as well. So I definitely liked this ribbon. And I just saw all the, the pieces together. It looked really nice, really primitive. And I mean, how easy was that for a transformation? So all I did was just attach the ribbon on the back with my nailer, my brad nailer again, um, after I figured out the exact height that I wanted it to hang at. And that's it for this one. It was so simple. I'm not putting any hangers on the signs you've seen so far because they're so heavy. I think they either need to be propped on something like leaning on a mantle or a table or they need to be like directly screwed into the wall. Um, that's just kind of my opinion. If somebody wants to add a hanger, they were are more than welcome to, but I don't like to take on that liability on something that's so heavy. Okay, so that was that project. We're already done with that one. Um, so my fourth project here is this little red, also a barn door. It still has its little hinges on one side and the lock on the other side. I didn't love the red, so I typically, if I don't like a color, either paint over it or I'll just sand it like you see me doing here. So that is a trick for you. If you think you don't like the color of something, I would actually try sanding it first if you're not feeling like painting the whole thing. Because um, a lot of time, if it just adds a little distress or sometimes you just take the shine away from it, you might actually like the color a lot better. So I went ahead and sanded the red because it was just a little too bold for me. And then I wanted to age it a little bit more. So I used that same antiquing wax from uh, Walmart and just put a nice coat of that and then wiped it all back. And that just kind of dulled the red um, in a way that's a little bit more to my taste. I, I'm pretty picky about red. It is definitely not one of my favorite colors, but I do love it for Christmas, of course. And so now I just kind of dug around in all of my Christmas garland and greenery um, I picked assortment of bells and greenery and pine cones and ribbon and just kind of built little, um, I don't know, what do you want to call this? <laughs> just a little display sign of greenery that could easily just be like a shelf sitter, most likely. It already has a sawtooth hanger on the back, so if someone wants to hang it on a wall, they can do that as well. I'm hot gluing the bow here on top. And those are just two little barn door makeovers for Christmas. I hope those kind of inspire you to maybe do something similar because they're so simple and you can use any materials you have on hand. And then my last project for today is um, renovate, renovating, upcycling these cookie cutters. I got these cookie cutters in uh, a Goodwill haul video I shared with you months and months ago and I set them aside for Christmas and here we are, it's already Christmas time. That felt like yesterday that I bought those. So for a few of them, I'm gonna be spray painting them copper. I thought that might be a new spin on these. This is the Krylon Copper Spray Paint from Michaels. I wanna say it was around four or five dollars, um, but it went on really well. I didn't end up doing two coats of paint though. And then for a couple other ones, I'm just gonna spray paint them white, even though I was definitely running out of spray paint. Um, and I did not know that until I was already going for it. So they're not like the best coverage of white, but you kind of get the idea still. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a variety of ideas that you guys can do today. And so just like every other project, you know, use what you have on hand. If you have like Christmas stuff that you've already kind of played with before, maybe you can cut something apart, cut up a garland or something and use those pieces to make these ornaments. 
Um, you know, just be creative with what you have on hand already. I did not go out and buy anything special to make these. I do have, you know, quite a collection, though, of, of stuff for Christmas, so I'm a little bit different than some others in that way. If you don't already have a collection, you might need to go to Michael's and, you know, grab a couple of things, but it doesn't have to be expensive. And look at how that one turned out. It was so cute. I just actually cut the greenery away from, like, a dollar store Christmas tree. So this is another project that's very affordable. You can get very creative with it, and I'm going to show you more of the final results in my final looks right here. All right, guys, it's time for final looks. Here's how everything turned out, except for my big Christmas shop sign that's already up at the tent sale at my treasure house. The tent sale runs from November 4th through November 6th. I'm unfortunately not gonna get any shots of the tent sale because I'm going to Tennessee tomorrow, but um, I will try to have some pictures posted at least on our Facebook page of the items that we're bringing up there. Here's how this little barn door turned out. I love that plaid ribbon, very primitive little piece. I mean, that literally took me a couple minutes to put together. Probably ask about $35 for that one. Here's how this little door turned out. As you saw, it was just kind of a collection of the bells, this little garland piece with the pine cone, and then a ribbon. I just kind of aged that red board, and that turned out really cute. I'll probably sell that one around $20. And then up here, here are all of the triangle trees. And like I said before, these are just some of my favorite kind of projects to share because you guys can just run wild with these and come up with any design that you can think of. They're so affordable. I love the idea of making like some really large sets. I just, I'm limited right now by my miter saw and just how big of a board it can cut. So that is my next thing on my wish list. I might actually go get one this weekend is just go upgrade my miter saw so I can make some bigger projects with you guys. And then I also like the idea of like one really wide one where they're all kind of stacked, like instead of a set of three, maybe just one that can go across someone's entire mantle. So, I mean, you can scale these as big or as small as you want. You can do any color scheme. I love sharing this kind of project because really, I know that you guys just need some ideas sometimes and then you can take it from there and create something really beautiful on your own. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this project because that one was really fun and I knocked them out just in minutes. It barely took me any time to create these. And then here's just a sample of the ornaments. I have a few more cookie cutters to put together, but I wanted to wrap this up today. Here's one that I spray painted white and you saw that I kind of ran out of white paint. Um, just did a little ribbon there. I'm hanging them all with a jute twine. And then these bells, like I said, are from Michael's. Here's another version. That one was just a silver cookie cutter. A couple different ribbons. A touch of like the berries and the greenery on top. And then try to go nice and slow. This one I also spray painted white. I like how the white looks with the red bells. That's my preference for sure. Little gingham ribbon there. And then here's how the copper one turned out. I like kind of playing with the copper and then the brown of the pine cone. That was the Krylon copper spray paint. It's really pretty. I got it at Michael's. So I like how that one came out too. And once again, you know, the options are endless with those. Just get creative, have a little bit of fun. Probably sell those for maybe five or six dollars each probably shoot for six and see how they sell at that price range. These, I think I'm going to sell for $8 for these small sets. And then if I am able to upgrade my saw and make some larger sets, I'll kind of just go up in my price from there. But these are pretty small, so I don't feel like I can ask too much for them. I think $8 is pretty reasonable. And that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know down in the comments which project is your favorite today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.